Okay, uh, in this video, I'm quickly just going to run us through um, how we can uh, uh, easily differentiate within x ray Forensics between email messages that are read versus those that are not read. Um, I, I don't particularly work in a civil arena, but I imagine, especially in civil uh, cases, that's probably quite an important point, uh, and perhaps with regard to certain legislations across the world, it is perhaps an issue as well for all kinds of cases. Uh, so I'm just going to create a quick test case. I'm going to add a variety of images to it. In this case, just these four. X-ray forensics will do its thing as usual. Uh, then what I'm going to do is just firstly ask it to uh, process all the email cabinets like DBX, <coughs> DSTs, excuse me, uh, and anything else that it might find. So to do that, we refine volume snapshot as usual. We tick the box for extracting email messages and attachments from, and it lists all of those by default as usual. Um, and uh, we're going to do it across all of these images. So we'll let that do its thing. It shouldn't. These are only small images, of course. They're test images mostly. And as I always remind people, this is running on a single machine, uh, so it's not going to be incredibly quick, but that's not taking too long. Um, so now what we can do is we can explore the emails that x ray Forensics has found within the cabinets uh, quite easily by simply clicking the type filter funnel there. And uh, I'm just going to choose EML and EMLX for now. So we activate that and then ask it to show recursively for all these forensic images or the email, right click at the top of case root, choose which images you want to see the email for and click OK. So it now lists all the emails. Um, now as you can see over here, you've got the attribute column which is applicable for all files but for what we're trying to do with emails it's of particular interest. If we left click the funnel next to attribute You'll see here you've got the extracted email option. If you untick it, there's nothing there. With it ticked, it lists these two options. And when you tick or untick the unread status, you get the not or or otherwise. So obviously, if you tick unread, uh, it will only show you email messages that are unread. If you tick that, it will show you only email, email messages that have been read. Uh, so I'm going to do it like that. Click. Uh, oh, just get rid of that now. And click activate. And then these are the email messages which have got an unread status, as you can see by this here. So conversely, we might say, well, we want to see the messages that are read instead of unread. And then, as you can see in the attribute column here, you've only got emails which have been read. And as usual, you click on one and you can see the preview there. Um, and so you could very easily, if you wanted to give a list of all of emails that have got a read or unread status, you can use the attribute filter. And then you could highlight everything in your list, create a table association called read emails. Click to finish the job. Oh. Oh, I've got this irritating problem with my mouse whenever I run the screencast software. I can't double click for some odd reason, but um, and vice versa again. So we'll add these. we can ask it to oops wrong one if we make sure our report table we can uh, ask it to show for example just the red email messages there by activating the report table column that 
to know you've only got the email messages that are part of our red email report table and then of course you can generate a list of those to put into either a web page an XML or a tab separated spreadsheet and you can even paste it into your clipboard and you would obviously choose for example name and path uh, hash category if you've done some uh, hashing of some variety uh, possibly internal ID uh, and attribute status I'm not going to do it but it, it's simple to do you click OK and it generates a spreadsheet file or whatever and you open it in Excel Okay, that's that. Easy.